Hey guys, I'm Prodder Chief Marisoft Team Kilo23. Today I'm here at Surplus in Woodenville, Washington with... Hi, my name is Dan. He's the head tech here at Surplus. Pretty cool guy, he knows what he's talking about. But today we're checking out the KWA SR10 top of the line M4 rifle. Let's get down to it. Alright, we got the KWA SR10 here. Just picking this up off the wall, the awesome gun wall here at Surplus. God, this feels amazing. Compared to a lot of guns that I have, ICS, Combat Machine, um, other brands and such, this is top of the line. You really get what you pay for with this gun. Bar none, no doubt about it. Now, let's start with the stock of the gun and work our way forward. The stock is, pretty sure it's an ABS plastic. This is the most resilient, awesome plastic you will ever find. It's got an excellent texture. The stock itself has virtually no wobble compared to a lot of other M4s out there. This is very solid. Now, the battery for this gun is housed in the stock. You can use any sort of smaller nunchuck or crane stock battery in this gun. It does come with a mini type Tamiya connector, so anything compatible with that will work just fine. Now, just in front of the buffer tube here, we do have a sling mount. This works on both sides, so if you guys want to buy an aftermarket sling and attach it here, you're welcome to. Moving up the gun a bit, we have the upper and lower receiver, as well as the rear sight, magazine well, and a hop-up chamber. The receiver itself is made of a very awesome looking aluminum. It's a matte black, it's very smooth, it feels and looks excellent. The rear sight is just like any other M4, M16 carry handle style sight, except the carry handle is non-existent, so it's only the sight itself. It's adjustable for windage and elevation. And you've got a large and small peep aperture for a close and long range shooting. The gun will come with a 350 round high capacity magazine. This is high capacity, so it's a wind up, put the BBs in on the top, wind it on the bottom, put it in the mag well and it'll click into place. Magazine release is on the right here, so you press that and the mag will drop out and you can switch it out for a new one. There is very, very little mag wobble in this gun. It's extra, extra nice right there. So that's a big plus for this gun. On the left side of the receiver here, we have the selector switch, safe, semi, and full auto. You click this thing into any position, it's extremely solid, it's pretty stiff. You're getting a great selector switch here. Not a lot of selector switches are stiff like this. I've had a lot that are pretty sloppy, they'll just wobble around. So the fact that this is stiff, it's a big plus. The pistol grip on this guy, it's a good texture. It's very solid, it doesn't wobble around like some models that I've used. It's very stiff to the gun. It's extremely comfortable, even compared to some other companies that have the same style grip. It's very, very comfortable. To access the hop-up, simply pull the charging lever back. You can see that retracts the fake bolt there. Under there is the hop-up adjustment wheel. You turn that forward or backward to adjust the hop-up. Now, just in front of that, we have the CNC machined free float rail system. This guy is extremely stable, no wobble whatsoever. Obviously, you've got rails on all four sides. They are labeled. L1, Rail1, etc. They're not sharp at all, so there's no need to put uh, RIS panels on here unless you really want to. It's not going to cut your hand open like some other RIS systems will. The front side on this gun screws onto the barrel, onto the Picatinny RIS rail. It is just like any other front sight for an M4 and 16 It's adjustable only for elevation. The gun does have a low profile gas block here. So it's a little bit of a plus if you guys are looking for something like that. Those usually run a little bit extra compared to the M4 M16 triangle sights. Of course, the gun will come with a metal flash hider, but it's got an orange, blaze orange tip. The end of the barrel has a 14 millimeter negative thread, so if you want to put a new flash hider or a suppressor on here, whatever sounds good to you guys, you're very welcome to do that. Now we can chrono the KWA SR10 with 0.2 gram rounds on a 9.6 volt large type battery. As you can see, the KWA SR10 is chroning about 380 to 390 FPS with point twos. All right, Dan, the head tech here at Surplus, is going to open up the KWA SR10 so we can look at the internals. And check out the hop up and barrel here first. Now, it does have a two piece plastic hop up. Plastic's nothing to worry about. This thing is excellent quality. It does come with the 2GX bucking, which does have the two fins on top so you get better accuracy. Comes with a brass barrel. Now, the rumor is here that the barrel on the RIS guns are anywhere from 5.95 to 
to 6.03 millimeters internally. Now, this is coming from directly, directly coming from KWA. So that was a surprise to me. Uh, the standard guns, the M4A1 and the G36C, will only come with 6.05 barrels, but these, in fact, are tighter bore. All right, we're looking down the barrel here at the 2GX bucking. You can see the two fins sticking down there. Now, the wiring system in the crane stock's a little different here. You got excellent, excellent quality cord, and you can see the fuse at the bottom there. Now, the motor, although it says high torque on it, is actually a pretty standard motor. It's got regular magnets in it, nothing special. I wouldn't put anything past an M110 spring on this, but it does have a bearing shaft here, so that's a plus. Plus, it's got a heat-treated pinion, so that's a bit of a durability plus there. Now, you can see on the outside of this gun, it has about 18-gauge wiring, 16 or 18, somewhere in there. You can also see it has 9mm bearing bushings, so those are a big plus. Excellent quality there. Moving up the gearbox a bit, we have the amazingly awesome 2GX reinforced gearbox shell. It is thick. You can just look at that right there and tell how thick it is. This is by far the strongest gearbox shell that the tech here has ever seen. All right, Dan's got the gearbox shell coming apart now. We can check out the amazing quality of KWA. So I like this gearbox because it has heat-treated steel gears. All of these have been heat-treated. The teeth on the sector gear are the widest I've ever seen, so there is increased surface area contact with the piston tooth, distributes the load a bit evenly. The piston is the strongest I've ever used. I've never broken one of these. Um, this piston can survive 150 spring or beyond with the LiPo. Inside you can see gold plated contacts, you got a high quality trigger shuttle, uh, this shuttle will survive LiPo use for over 80,000 rounds. And you can see the internal reinforcement in the, inside the gearbox. The cylinder is ported. The port is at the very back. Uh, it helps match the volume of compressed air to the length of the barrel. The piston head is aluminum. does not have any ventilation ports. And I believe KWA did this intentionally the piston head doesn't have any ventilation ports. So that means that on the intake stroke, air is being sucked into the, through the nozzle. And on the compression stroke, the air is being shot out the nozzle. Under 20 BBs per second, this can happen and it, it works all right. But above 20 BBs per second, you start running into an issue where the air cannot get sucked in through the nozzle fast enough and cannot be expelled out the nozzle fast enough. And I think KWA did this to prevent people from using lipos that are too strong. Uh, because if you use like a 30C lipo, the rate of fire is going to exceed the capacity of this little nozzle and your velocity will be reduced on full auto. It's kind of like a, a safety measure, you could say. Um, if you want better full auto consistency, you can replace this piston head with a ventilated piston head. And that way, on the intake stroke, the air will be sucked in from behind the gearbox instead of just through this nozzle. Also, your cylinder will stay cleaner because it won't suck dirt off the BB off each shot. The sector gear comes with a sector gear chip, and the tappet plate is a strong polycarbonate tappet plate. I've also never seen these things break. Spring is about an M110 strength. It's a little bit smaller than other springs. Main spring guide is made of metal and has a thrust bearing on the end of it. The anti-reverse latch has also been heat treated as well. This is the proprietary KWA nozzle. It has a groove that runs the length of the top of the nozzle and also is made of metal. Thanks for watching guys. I'm Prodder Chief Marisoft Team Kilo 23. Might just come back here sometime, check out some more guns. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.